Berries from a creeper? Let's modify some vanilla loot tables. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, friends, I'm back into everyone's more, and in this tutorial, we'll be adding or basically modifying vanilla loot tables. This will be done with global load modifiers. Modifying vanilla load tables is a highly sought after topic, so we're just going to do it right here. So this is going to work with data gen, so do keep in mind that if you don't have data gen, I will show the, well, generated JSON files in the end, but then you need to basically write the JSON files manually. As per usual, all of the code will be available to you down below in the description. There's a GitHub repository, so there you go. Count Joe, tutorial mod in the package. What we're gonna do is a new package, and this is gonna be called loot. Instead of there, we'll need two new Java classes. The first one is the mod loot modifiers class. And the second class is going to be the add item modifier. Mod modifier. There you go. So this is going to be, well, the basic class of the modifier. Now there is a loot modifier given to us by a NeoForge called the add table loot modifier. And this basically allows you to add another loot table to an already existing loot table. While that's great as well, and that could work, I personally like the add item modifier because that simply adds one singular item. Or, I mean, how many ever, however many you want, but basically adds one item. In this case, it would only add one. However, you can, you know, th this is code. You can, of course, change this as well. This is going to serve as an example, but there we go. Public class add item modifier, which will extend from the loot modifier class. And we're going to hover over this to implement the two methods that we need. We're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super. And there we go. Then we're going to need a map codec. I will copy this over because I, I don't like codecs, but that's a whole other issue. And the idea here is that we first of all have a map codec of this particular class. So the add item modifier. This is going to be equal to record codec builder map codec. And then it's basically going to make this so that you have an item over here, right? So you can basically define an item. And in this case, it is just an item. We then also have to add this item to the, to the constructor. So we're going to first of all make the constructor public. And the constructor will then also have an item over here as a parameter. I'm going to say this that item is equal to the item parameter. And then no more errors should be present. The downside to doing it like this is that you can only define one item in this case. Right, so the, the item modifier itself over here, the add item modifier, can only ever add one singular item to a to a loot table, and that's it. Now, of course, you can make another one, right? You can add, make another class called, let's say, add multiple item modifiers. And then instead of just taking an item in, you can make it take in an item array or something like that. Or an item stack array, so that you can even define how many of, you know, each particular item should go in there. You can do all sorts of things, or you can use the add table loot modifier over here from NeoForge to basically just make a custom loot table and then add that to an already existing loot table. Would also work totally fine. Any of those works, basically. But in this case, the add item modifier in, in my personal use cases has been the most useful. So that's why I'm showing you this. I will also link down below a great article on the NeoForge docs on how the, um, how the loot modifiers work. That's a great read as well. In the codec method, we're simply going to return the codec. And in the do apply method, the idea is as follows. This wants to return an object array list of item stacks. So the object array list we get here is the loot that was generated. So we're actually going to just rename this to generated loot because I think that that makes it way clearer. And the idea is that this is the loot that would drop if we were to add nothing. And that is also what we want to return. So we want to return that generated loot. And now if we were to do whatever we do in terms of the item over here, it would change nothing because we're simply taking the generated loot and we're basically pushing it back again, right? We're pushing it back out. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do. Of course, because this is a simple list over here, you can clear this. So uh, if we call the clear method, all of a sudden, this would now drop nothing. So for every loot table that we would define this item modifier over here, right? Our custom one, all of a sudden, it would drop nothing. Highly recommended to not do this because that's this can basically ruin your mod intercompatibility. And if you have a a loot modifier that actually clears the loot table, definitely do not make it the add item modifier. Make it a custom one, another one, right? Another class over here that's suggested. What we actually are going to do is the following. I'm just going to copy this over because the code is not too bad. So this is the, this needs the loot context. And the idea is that it's basically just going to loop through all of the conditions that we have, right? So this is the loot item conditions. 
and it's going to test them via the loot context. And then if any of them do not match, then we're just going to basically return the normal loot. So this means that, for example, there could be a condition that says it has to be raining. And if that's not true, then we're not going to add our custom loot. But as soon as we do this over here, now our loot is added to the list of things that are going to drop. We're going to make a new item stack of the item that we have defined. And that is going to be then returned together with this list, basically, because we've added it to the list. That's the idea of the do apply method. And there we go. Uh, like I said, you can, of course, uh, take this, uh, take the class, you can break it down, you can do all sorts of things, right? Test it out, try out a bunch of stuff, try out a bunch of things, and just see for yourself. And that's basically always the best way to learn how this all works. Next point is to register this modifier. This happens in the mod loot modifiers class. For this, of course, we need a exactly deferred register of type map codec of type question mark extends I global loot modifiers modifier. There we go. This is the loot modifier modifier serial serializers equal to a deferred register dot create. This is the neoforge registries dot keys dot global loot modifier serializers tutorial mod dot mod ID. There we go. This code is, of course, also available to you down below. Highly recommended to check that out because sometimes it is a little bit crazy. I will admit this. And there we go. Then we have a register method over here with loot modifier serializers that register passing in that event bus. And of course, this needs to be called in the tutorial mod constructor over here. Mod loot modifiers that register passing in the event bus. And then we can register it. Super simple. Once again, public static final supplier of a map codec of a question mark extends I global loot modifier, which is going to be the at underscore item equal to loot modifier serializers that register is going to be called at underscore item. And then a this is a supplier for at item modifier dot codec. And there we go. So this basically registers the, the serialization of it so that it basically when it reads it inside of a JSON file, it understands ah it should use the do apply method right here that we've added there. That's, that's sort of the idea. And then we go on to DataGen to actually properly do this. Now for this, we need a new class. So in the DataGen package, we're going to make a new Java class called the mod mod global loot modifier provider. Just making sure that we write this correctly. Provider. There we go. This will extend from the global loot modifier provider. We'll hover over this to implement the start method. We'll hover over this again. Create constructor matching super. I'm going to change the mod ID over here. We're just going to delete it and just simply say tutorial mod mod ID. Very straightforward. And then in the start method, this is where we can basically add those or different things. Let's say, for example, one thing that could be quite useful is to add radish seeds to short grass with, let's say, a 25% chance. So we're going to say this dot add the name of this. Very important. This is going to be radish underscore seeds underscore two underscore short underscore grass. So I basically the convention roughly is what do you add and then to what do you add it? That's the rough idea. And then here we're going to make a new add item modifier because what we want to do is we want to add this item, right? So the modification is to add an item and then this needs loot item conditions. There's going to be a new loot item condition, but you can see this is a this is an area of loot item conditions. And here we can add multiple new item conditions. Now the loot item conditions, there's plentiful or there's a lot of them. So there's an interface and you can see there's quite a few of them. There's time check, condition reference, uh, there's composite uh, item conditions. So there's quite a few different things over here. And uh, we're going to try to keep it, you know, semi sort of understandable. If you want to add something to a to a block, then you choose the loot item block state property condition that has block state properties. Here, we then define what block we want. So that in this case, it would be short grass and then call build. This then has added this to a loot as a loot condition. We then have a secondary loot condition in this case, and that's going to be the chance. So this is the loot item random chance condition. You can see that there's also the one with enchanted bonus. In our case, we're just going to choose the chance with a random chance of, let's say, 25%. We're then also going to build this, and that is it. Now, after the closing uh, curly bracket over here, we then define what item we want to add because this is the constructor for our add item modifier. So in this case, mod items dot radish seeds dot get. And with this, we have now added the radish seeds to the short grass over here with a roughly 25% chance of dropping. Now, the chance over here doesn't always 100% work, especially when it comes to entities. I feel like there's some weirdness going on there, but regardless, this should roughly match up. 
And then we can, of course, duplicate this and we can say, hey, how about we add it to tall grass as well? Because that kind of makes sense, right? And there we go. Now we've added this to both the tall grass as well as the short grass. We're going to duplicate this again. And of course, when you duplicate this, always be sure to change the name because here we're then going to add something to a loot table for a for um for a structure. So this is going to be a chisel from, let's say, the jungle temple. Okay. In this case, I actually want this to always happen. So here you can keep the loot random chance, obviously, but so that we don't have to, you know, go around 18 different temples. We're just not, we're not going to add that. The way that we're going to do this is with a different loot table condition, and that is going to be the new loot table condition ID loot table ID condition builder. This is the one that we want to chain use. And here we supply the resource location of that particular loot table that we want to change. So resource location that with default namespace chests chests slash jungle underscore temple and then after the second closing parentheses a dot build and there we go now this is not going to be a radish seed this is now going to be a chisel if you want to know the loot table ids or the you know the resource locations of the vanilla loot tables you can go down to the external libraries and then uh, right here in the resources, I believe that that's actually already where we want to be. Yes, uh, Minecraft resources, aka client extra. We have data Minecraft loot underscore table. And then we can see chests and we can see the jungle underscore temple. That's exactly there. And you can, of course, also take a look at all of the other ones. I highly recommend it. Check this out. That's basically the best resource that you have on where to go. And yeah, that's then basically adding it to a chest loot table. And lastly here, we're going to do a berry from Creeper, let's say. There we go. And to do that, well, we also use the loot table ID condition. And here then we say entities slash Creeper. And let's say we can also add a randomness to it if we wanted to. right? So we could re-add, let's say, the loot random chance over here. However, I have found that the random chance does not equal the random chance that you put in here. For some reason... Uh, it's, it's all sorts, like it's all over the place. So just for the sake of demonstration, we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep this and we're just, just going to add the goji berries over here. And there we go. So those are going to be the four different, well, loop, loop modifiers that we're going to add in this case. So then let's go to the data generators to actually add this very straightforward generator dot add provider event dot include server is going to be a new mod global loop modifiers provider with a pack output and the lookup provider and there we go and now we should have everything we need now one thing that is not associated with this is that we also need to add the dropping of the self for the chair i believe that's actually should be everything we need uh, because we haven't added that uh, every block obviously needs a drop once again this has nothing to do with the loot tables this is just so that the data works so if we now go to data and we run this then in theory it should generate everything. And for the ones that have no data gen, uh, well, that's going to be quite interesting because the JSON files that are generated, obviously you need to then do manually. So in re generated resources, this should be under data, tutorial mod, there's a loop modifiers right here, as well as a NeoForge where, where the global loop modifiers are all defined. But that's just basically the list of this. And then here, let's see, here we can, for example, take a look at the berry from Creeper and see that we have a Goji berry that is added to the creeper over here with a loot table ID condition. And then similarly here, we have a 25% random chance for the short grass to yield radish seeds. That's basically the idea. That's everything we need. Like I said, if you want to do this manually, the JSON files should also be uploaded in the GitHub repository. So you can take a look at this, including the folder structure. But with that done, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, we're back in Minecraft and let's just take a look. And if I start breaking some grass over here, let's see if you can't find, well, some seeds. And there we have it. There are some radish seeds. Now you can see that it's definitely not 25%. So one thing that might be the case is that there's like a secondary check that runs. So basically that if it wants to or if it would have dropped wheat seeds, then it like decides to drop them. I'm not quite sure. So the random chance is definitely not 100% accurate. Uh, however. Once again, that's, you know, you can play around with those numbers as, as always, right? I, I always recommend that anyway. And let's just see when it comes to the creeper. So in theory, the creeper should, of course, drop some goji berries. And I do believe that because we have no random chance, it should drop them every single time, right? If we did have a random chance, obviously, then 
well, there would be a random chance associated with it. If we then locate a structure, which is going to be the jungle pyramid, that's actually what the jungle temple is called, uh, then we should be able to go in here and simply find what we're looking for. And what we're looking for is exactly the chisel. There we have it. So there's a chisel in here. Obviously, once again, with a 100% chance. So there might also even be two over here because I, I'm not 100% sure how the loot table does it. Uh, but in this case, it was actually the last um, possible, uh, you know, uh, like location over here. But yeah, there you go. That is modifying vanilla loot tables added to Minecraft. Awesome. Like I said, all of the code is available to you down below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about a basic block entity. I know it's finally there. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.